Hello everyone. When it comes to trapping monkeys, African halters have their own special way of doing it. Firstly, they would get a jar, tie some heavy object onto it and place it strategically high up on a tree. Then they would put a nut or some hard food, which the monkey adores, into the jar. The idea is that the adult monkey's paw would just fit into the jar to grab the food. But then, with the paw full of food, he wouldn't be able to pull it out, so he gets trapped. Of course, he could release the food and go free, but he stubbornly won't, and so he easily ensnares himself. Now, the prosperous young man is in the same predicament. Jesus looks steadily at him and loves him like he loves all of us. But the love which Jesus has for him calls for a response which stretches beyond the keeping of the Ten Commandments on which he prides himself. It has a rather hefty price tag attached. He invites this affluent twenty-something to sell everything he owns, give the money to the poor and finally become a disciple. In this way he'll have treasure in heaven. But for him this was a bridge too far, so he leaves the company of Jesus, a mighty sad man, I might add. When it comes to securing a place in the world to come, we can't afford to be clinging on too much to this one. That is precisely what this well-heeled young man was doing. Now I live in Sheffield. And there's a big shopping centre there called Meadow Hall. Some people call it Meadow Hell. Now have you noticed that Meadow Hall shopping complex has a dome resembling a place of worship? The temptation for shoppers, young and old, is to worship all that money can buy. Shop until you drop, to me, sounds like a sure recipe for unhappiness. Like the rich young man, you'll end up feeling empty and sad. There is also a reference to priestly and religious vocations at the end of the Gospel today when Jesus talks about leaving family, land and possessions to follow him. Now I'm firmly convinced that the reason for the scarcity of vocations in the Western Church is our overly materialistic way of life compared to the developing world where vocations are on the increase. Sounds like the rich young man in today's gospel had a vocation, but his wealth got in the way. We're not at all saying that we don't need money, but turning it into a god or an object of worship will never bring fulfilment, either in this life, or I would say in the next, either. Jesus gives us advice on the matter when he says, Yes, use money, that tainted thing, to win you friends, so that when it fails you, they may welcome you into the tents of eternity. Money is made round to go round, and if we're mean with it and don't share it, then who'll be there to welcome, welcome us into eternity? The Lord loves a cheerful giver. If we see all we own as a gift of God to be shared, not something we hoard solely for our own use, then I'm sure we won't be short of welcomers when we reach the pearly gates. Our treasure on earth will have translated into treasure in heaven. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.